Hey everybody, welcome back. This is your best friend Patrick Fair with Fistful of Cards, and today we are going to continue our Doomtown deck building series. Today we're going to be talking about a Morgan Regulators standard horse deck. Uh, so let's get right into it. Who is this for and what is our goal? If you're the kind of player who likes to play theme decks or tribal decks as they're called in other games, or if you're the kind of player who wants to take advantage of both the movement and shootout aspects of Doomtown Reloaded, this is a list for you. Uh, our goal is to put a huge amount of horses into play and then to overwhelm our opponent with our extremely mobile dudes and our powerful horse cards. So let's talk about our structure here. Uh, this is a 16-16 X deck. For the X, we do have um, two sort of softer values that will support our uh, major values here. And the goal of this, again, is to have consistency in our legal hands. We won't oftentimes be making legal four of a kinds or things like that with these 10 cards. However, these cards ensure that these cards are more likely to be legal. And that's something that we're going to be trying to do quite a bit. Um, going through our list here, we've got our home, which is the Morgan Regulators home, widely considered to be one of the best homes in the game. It is a 19 wealth, 3 production home. Its ability is choose your dude, move them to town square. That dude becomes a stud if they have a horse, unboot them. It is just all around a very powerful effect. Uh, we are running tons of horses, so we can unboot our dudes. Uh, turning our dudes into a stud, whether they have a horse or not, can be very powerful. And this card can be used from anywhere. So if you have a dude with a horse in a at a Blake ranch out of town, your opponent's Blake ranch, and you're stopping their production, you can use this to get them back into town without booting, and you can unboot them if they are booted, which is very, very powerful. Uh, going through the rest of the list, we are going to be talking about our hearts first this time. Uh, we are running a lot of horses. So our primary values are 7 and 8 and uh, these off-value horses are going to give us a little bit of support. We are a combat horse deck. There's a lot of different ways to run horses, and uh, for example, every value in the game, except for two and four, I believe, has a horse. Um, and so what that means is that you'll see a huge amount of variety in horse decks, and you can play them out of every faction, and you can play them all kinds of different ways with gadgets or spirits or all kinds of um, crazy combinations and what we're going to focus on today is sort of the general brick layer bottom of horse decks and so in order to do that we're going to be talking about our shootout horse deck um, so seven and eight are very powerful values and they do have what i personally believe are the best horses of the bunch um, we have pinto which is a two cost horse its ability is shootout move this dude into a posse very powerful. You can do it from anywhere. Again, so if you have out of town uh, deeds or uh, dudes that are out of town deeds or dudes that are at other deeds and stuff like that, you can essentially move them into a shootout uh, from anywhere. It also doesn't boot them to do so. It also can move booted dudes. So very, very powerful card. We also have Pedro, one of the top 10 cards in the game, pretty guaranteed. Um, it is a zero-cost horse, which, in a, which if it didn't do anything else would be a very powerful card, um, but it is also a sidekick. It also does lower our dude's value, which makes us a little bit more uh, susceptible to things like shotgun, and uh, this dude cannot be moved by opposing card effects, which is a powerful effect. And so, essentially, for those who don't know, sidekicks can be used to cover casualties in Doomtown, and so if we get into a fight and we both tie and we both have to take one casualty each, uh, we can you can lose a dude and I can discard my Pedro to cover that casualty. And so overall, this is a very, very good fighting um, horse. It allows us to, it protects us from things like pistol whip and other effects that our opponent might use to get us out of the fight. This card just ignores those things. Um, our backup horses are two roan, which is just a cheaper, weaker version of Pinto in most cases. It is a react that allows you to send a, uh, or it allows a unbooted dude to join a posse uh, when they would normally have to boot. Uh, it doesn't move booted dudes, but it does move unbooted dudes, which can be pretty useful. 
Um, and we also have two Mustangs, primarily because they're A5. Mustang is a very expensive horse, and therefore it doesn't see a whole lot of play. However, in situations where we're playing sort of a longer game or we're playing against a more passive opponent, we can get a lot of value out of Mustang because of its ability to just move us anywhere. And those are our horses. And in order to back up those horses, we are running a couple of horse-related clubs. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about Calling the Calvary. Calling the Calvary was released very late into AEG's control of Doomtown Reloaded. Uh, it is a extremely powerful card and essentially put horses on the map after a very long time of them not being sort of a viable deck. So you'll see this card in a lot of horse decks. Um, its ability is... During this round's resolution, both players gain plus one hand rank for each horse in their posse. So obviously, we're running a ton of horses. If you are, to help out with a little bit of theoretical math here, if you are pl playing a legal full house and you have three horses in your starting posse, your hand then becomes a legal five of a kind. So this card is, oh, it also can turn a dude into a stud, which is good, but is not the core reason you run the card. Um, the big thing about this card is not only is it very, very powerful, it's also something that you're, puts your, a lot of fear into your opponent. Um, it'll make it so that your opponent gets put into the situation where they have to think very hard about whether or not they're wanting to cheat, because they can see the amount of horses. They know you're going to increase your hand rank by three or four or two or whatever it is, and they have to think to themselves, well, if I play a legal full house and they play a legal full house, well, we're going to tie and then they're going to be increased by three and then I'm going to lose by three. So do I cheat? But if I cheat, I could get punished. And so it puts your opponent in sort of a lose-lose situation. Um, and that is an incredibly powerful effect in of itself. And the card will oftentimes just win you a round of the shootout. Keep in mind that it is for both players. So if you're in a near matchup against another horse deck, or if you're playing against someone who just happens to be running a couple of horses in their deck, it's something to take into consideration when you are playing this card. It's also a headline, which means it's canceled by other headlines. So if you are playing in a meta where a lot of players are using headlines, then maybe calling the cavalry isn't the right call. But in this particular case, we are going to be playing it. The other horse-related card that we're running is Run 'em Down. Now, Run 'em Down is somewhat of a confusing card, but basically what it does is it takes your dudes at one location with horses, it moves them to another location of your choosing, um, and it boots a dude at that location that your opponent controls, and it gives you the option to call them out. So it's essentially sort of a different variation on kidnapping without actually being a job. And so we can take a huge amount of advantage of this. This allows us to call dudes out at home. It allows us to move our dudes without booting them. And so we have a lot of options. We can also just use it for the utility. We can also just choose a dude that's kind of scary. Maybe our opponent has put a bunch of goods or powers onto a dude that makes them a, a threat to us. And we can do things like, okay, well, I send my one dude to boot that guy, and then I, I'm i done. I don't call you out. I don't get into a fight. And that can put our opponent on the back burner as they try and struggle and figure out how they're going to play their turn without their best guy. And so those are our, our two very powerful horse effects. So as you can see, we have a lot of mobility, and that's a big theme. And our mobility is largely shootout based. We have a lot of get into a fight, move into a fight, move, uh, protect yourself from leaving a fight, start a fight, things like that. And that's going to be a big theme of this deck. Um, our other uh, cards, we do have two pistol whips and one pin down. These aren't often going to be... Um, hugely reliable game changers because we are running only one and two of them however uh, you might have noticed that this deck does not have a huge amount of shootout effects that affect our opponent and that's largely because we're spending a lot of our card slots on horses and horse based cards so we do have powerful cards but we don't have some of the more standard things and this just gives us a little bit of um extra umph in those areas. So we do have Pistol Whip, which I've talked about in other videos. It allows you to remove threats. It allows you to remove things like Willem A, uh, which can make your shootouts less impactful, and that's something we don't want. So we're going to run a couple of these. Pin Down is powerful. 
Uh, we're only really going to find room for one of them, but it's a very powerful card that lets us target our opponent. However, it's super unreliable in this particular deck because we're only running one, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Our anti-cheating cards, we don't have any anti-cheating hearts in this particular deck. We do have four This Will Hurt in the Morning and two I'm Your Huckleberry. This Will Hurt in the Morning is sort of a weaker version of bottom dealing. Oftentimes it won't be as dramatic as bottom dealing in either direction, so you won't end up in situations where you change your opponent's five of a kind into a high king. However, uh, you also won't uh, typically give them a super duper powerful hand. Um, this is sort of a longer uh, game cheating resolution as it does have a tendency to ace your opponent's uh, cards if they don't pay you ghost rock oh, excuse me which is um pretty powerful uh, and as we will talk about in a little bit uh, our deeds essentially ensure that we will be playing a longer game with horses than um, some of the other decks that we've talked about during this series i'm your huckleberry is a brand new cheating card it is uh, just a powerful card. It allows us to, in most cases, if we have a legal hand, it'll let us pick a, a dude that our opponent controls. We'll generally pick the best one they have, and we will use them to cover casualties if we need to. Um, the downside of this card is that it doesn't typically win you a shootout. It also um, only has so much wiggle room. For example, if my opponent has a cheating five of a kind and I have a legal full house, well, I am covering two casualties by acing their dude, but I'm not going to be covering um, all of the casualties with that. So uh, the uh, this card can be very powerful, but just keep in mind it doesn't stop the scariest of the scary cards in the game. Uh, so continuing on here, we do have uh, seven and eight. Seven and eight in Morgan specifically, or in Entrepreneurs uh, specifically, is very powerful because a lot of our dudes actually care about having horses. We get dudes that can move us if we have horses. We get dudes that get um, can use horses multiple times, get more bullets, get more influence. There's a lot of different um, dudes that have access to abilities if they have horses, and so that's one of the main reasons. We're also on value with two of the best horses and a lot of um, powerful horse-related cards and anti-cheating cards, but the downside of both of these values is that the deeds are terrible. And by terrible, I mean that most of them do not have control points. We do run 10 deeds, however, only five of them actually start with control points. Most of our deeds are out-of-town deeds or just economy deeds and stuff like that, so you will be, most of the time, playing a longer game as you wait for your control points to come up. However, our deck has a lot of mobility, so you can take advantage of your opponent's deeds by sitting on them and uh, fighting over them, as well as punishing your opponents who want to sit at home with things like run them down. And so that's something to keep in mind. And there really isn't, if you go through the deeds, there really isn't a whole lot of other options on these values. I'm not just intentionally running cards that don't have control points. There just aren't very many. Um, we do have Hunter Protections, which I wanted to kind of single out and talk about for a moment. Hunter Protections, um, you can boot a dude at the location of Hunter Protections and get a control point. Now, uh, Normally this is okay. In our deck it's pretty powerful. We do have a lot of ways of unbooting our dudes with Morgan Regulators, for example. We can just unboot the dude that we put onto Hunter's Protections. We can also get them into fights regardless with Pinto. We can also move them with Run'em Down, things like that. And so I just thought I'd point out that um, we can generate control points onto our dudes with Hunter Protections. And so that's sort of... Um, a way around some of the the lack of control points but by and large you're just going to have to accept that if you're going to run um, seven and eight as core values that they uh, don't have a lot of control points uh, our starting posse is highly flexible if you don't like this particular starting posse you can always run other things like Jarrett Blake and things like that uh, the most mandatory thing in the starting posse is Maggie Harris she allows you to run a job at your home which uh, lets you get horses from your discard pile. So this essentially will just push our horse goal very, very quickly. We can just do things like, okay, turn one, I play Pedro, I go to the discard pile, I grab Pinto, I've got two horses on the first turn, and I'm going to grab a couple for the first couple of turns. I've got you know three or four horses right off the bat, then I can start going. It just accelerates what you're trying to do very, very quickly. Um, other than that, we're running Bucky Billy, Bucking Billy Ballard, 
um, who just gets better if he has a horse, um, just a solid stat line, and has a better stat line if he's got a horse. Uh, we're running Willa May for a little bit of protection, and we're running Irving Patterson and Jake Smiley, um, both of which are just essentially influence drops. And that is essentially the deck. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. If you did, get, consider giving us a thumbs up. If you hated it, give us a thumbs down. Either way, I want to see you guys in the comment section, and we will see you next time. <laughs>